I scooped up this metal filing cabinet from Facebook Marketplace for $25. So to begin my project, I took it out of my van and I put it up on some um, raised ladders just so it's easier to work with. And I removed all the drawers. I can save the drawers for another project or take them to scrap metal. For this project, I do not need them. Then I'm going to come in with this rust paint that is good for bare or rusted metal. This is shade is flat black and I'm going to paint the entire filing cabinet, the sides, the fronts and the backs, making sure as well that I get the top parts of the filing cabinet so the middle pieces where the drawers were. I'm using a foam roller for easy application. I'm going to do two full coats and let it fully dry in between each coat. Then I'm going to use my drill and I'm going to drill in some um, holes in the bottom of my filing cabinet and these are going to be for drainage. So you can see I've set it up here on my porch. To weight it down I'm going to be putting in two bags of pea stone gravel and the neat thing about this since they're just for weight I'm going to leave them in the bags. That's way if I ever need them for a different project or something else they're in the bags and I don't have to scoop them out from the bottom. Then I'm going to go to my yard and I collected all these old leaves. This is great because I'm going to fill up the bulk of the cabinet with the leaves so I don't have to waste a lot of my potting mix. So I fill it up till there's about a quarter left at the top and then I fill that last quarter with my potting mix. I've used potting mix that I bought brand new as well as some old planters that I had laying around. I dumped in some of that potting mix too. Then I'm going to go ahead and plant in my flowers. So this year I've decided to go with some nice little pansies here and I'm just planting them into each square of the filing cabinet giving sufficient space in between. And once those are all planted, this is my finished planter. I am so happy with how this project turned out. Like I said, I scooped this filing cabinet up for $25 and I created something new and trendy with it.
first step I'm going to do is start clearing out some of these big flat rocks. I got to get the base ready in order to build my next project. What I got to do also is get the loose debris out of the way using a rake to scrape it to the sides. Next I'm going to grab a shovel and clear all the sandy soil away because I need to get to a firmer base. All I got to do is just set it to the side, just dig down a tiny bit. If you need to put gravel down, go ahead, but it was pretty hard when I got down there. Next step is to take a small 2x4 and screet the area. Just go back and forth. That helps level the soil. Once I get it all cleared and put a level on it, I want to make sure it is nice and level. Now it's time for the first block. Put that down, shake it a little bit so that it feels nice and firm. Now it's time for the second one. We're going to put this one right next to it. Make sure it's level. If you have to add more soil or anything, go right ahead. If you dig down too far, add a little bit more sand, a little bit at a time, and pat it down. Now this one is going to be a little different. You see how that one sticks out? We're going to actually keep doing this up and down as we go. This is your project. You can make it as big as you want. Once you get that base done, put that 2x4 across and make sure it's level. A perfect, nice base is going to make the rest of this project go good. Now it's time for some construction adhesive. We don't want to put too much on. We just need to make sure those bricks don't slide and break and fall whenever we put them together. So just put it down. It'll hold it nice and even. Next time we're going to do this, we're going to put a brick on, but we're going to let this block hang over just a little bit. And I'll show you why later. So when we put it on, we're going to put some more adhesive down and keep working our way. Once we get the adhesive down, we can put the second block on. As you can see, this one is also sticking over. We're going to let that do it, and then you put one on top and that'll hold it in place. Remember to keep putting adhesive as you go. One tube did this whole project. Once you get that up, make sure it's nice and level and even with each other. And then I cut a nice big piece of redwood board that fits on top. Make sure once it fits that we put it back up, put some adhesive underneath and fit it on place. But we're not done yet. It's time for spring, so we got to put some flowers out. I grab these from the hardware store and I go ahead and separate the roots a little bit and put some nice potting soil in. The better the soil, the better it sticks. Now. These pots will slide right down in and take the form of the cavity that we're putting them in. I'm going to go ahead and put these in all the little cavities that are sticking out and it's just going to look great. Remember, not too much, just slide them down. Remember that empty spot? Well, look at this. Now I've got a wonderful concrete planter out front and it looks great. And it's really inexpensive. It's a great little side table for me and I love it and the family does too.
I found this basket for a few dollars, so I'm going to use this round drill bit to add the lamp. I just need to thread the cord through the hole. Now that I have my pieces cut, I need to join the two together and use a piece of fusing tape and then hold my hot iron on it and I can slip the cord right through the middle. I love how pretty this basket looks as a lamp and how easy it was to cover the dark cord. Run to Dollar Tree and pick up one large plastic bowl. Use a palette knife and drywall spackle to apply to the exterior of the bowl. Create a hole in the bottom of the bowl in the size of a light socket. Finish spackling around the hole. Add Dixie Bell's Slick and Stick to the inside of the bowl with a paintbrush. Take your Modern Masters metallic gold paint, at least two layers. Sand the surface of the spackled exterior. Take Reb and Buff and buff into the surface of the bowl interior. Take a hanging light kit from Amazon. Add a light bulb of choice. Hang in place and plug in. Create your own modern pendant light for less than $15. So I picked up a couple of these dollar store solar lights and I'm going to take them apart. I need to add some painter's tape to cover the essential pieces and then use a craft knife to cut around it. So I'm going to untwist this screw, adding a couple coats of a matte black spray paint. And I'm just going to take some floral royer and wrap it around each one of those clips. Screw the black part back on top. I'm going to thread the chain through the screw and tighten it about halfway. I'm just going to use my floral wire and wrap it around that hoop. Make it perpendicular to the larger hoop so I've got this really cool orb. They're subtle and they're beautiful. We are going to start with seven of these bowls. You're also going to need some E6000. Just basically go around. You're going to place it on top. We're going to do this again. So I'm going to give these a little bit of time to cure. I'm going to be taking my E6000 and I'm going to go around the top of this. Stack it on top and we're going to do this one more time. I am using Dixie Belle Vintage Duck Egg Chalk Paint. So I'm actually going to use E6000 for this step. Line it up and then we're going to let that sit until it dries. And we are gonna trace around the inside of the, of the hole that I created. You actually will not need to paint the underside, just the sides and the top. I'm gonna start with the bottom part, tilt that up. So we are going to take a solar light, placing it over, put the top part of our solar light, and it's gonna nestle right in. Here is my finished DIY cordless solar lamp for my outdoor patio. I bought a set of bamboo plates, these LED bulb lights. I'm using two different types of spray paint, and then I'm gonna go over the top with a little bit of gold, unscrew this piece, and turn the light on. I'm going to use some double-sided adhesive mounting strips. Then I'm just gonna stick the light bulb to the center of the plate. Picture hanging strips. So I'm just gonna apply one big one to the back and hang it up on my wall. That's it. This was a really easy project to make these gorgeous light fixtures. Head to the dollar store and grab a solar light. So I'm gonna remove the wrapping from each of the picture frames and I'm using hot glue to adhere the glass to the picture frame. So I'm placing fix all super glue onto each of the sides, place them against each other in a square shape. I'm gonna paint the top and the sides with a nice even coat of the black paint. I've grabbed some outdoor Mod Podge. This is gonna be a great sealer for the wood. I'm gonna take the super glue fix all and coat the top edge and place it on top of one of the painted boards. I'm gonna remove the base of a solar light. I'm gonna add some hot glue and then I'm gonna place it in the center of all the photo frames. I'm gonna add some adhesive fix all and then I'm gonna place the other piece of wood on the top. I'm gonna to cut through the pool noodle, wrap the pool noodle with the gaffer's tape. I'm taking a flower pot and flipping it upside down. I'm going to place a broom handle into the upside down flower pot. Place the pool noodle on top of the broom handle. I'm placing the photo frame box on top. Here it is all finished and I just am thrilled with how it turned out.
Start to paint your pots and saucers with a matte finish paint or chalk paint. Take a paper napkin and separate the two ply layers. Draw a circle and cut it out with scissors. Take the saucer and brush the decoupage glue so the bottom and sides of the saucer are covered. Place the paper napkin circle and press down in the center and smooth the napkin out. Dip a small paintbrush in water and brush along the top of the saucer. Add a final layer of decoupage glue. Take a strong adhesive glue and place a ring of glue. Place the saucer on top of the bottom of the pot. You now have a beautiful clay pot candle holder. First, we're gonna spray paint. I'm using Rust-Oleum Satin Heirloom White and Rust-Oleum Stone. We're gonna take some painter's tape. You kinda wanna rough tear one edge of it. We're gonna put this along the bottom. I'm using a craft paint and I'm just using brushed gold. You kind of want to make it look like the, the paint is kind of tearing and you can see underneath it. All right, so here's the finished product and I absolutely love how they turned out. I have a cylinder vase from the Dollar Tree, this epoxy pen holder on Amazon. And I'm gonna basically just trace. All right, so now that I have hollowed out the center, I want to make sure that the paint doesn't necessarily necessarily sink in to the foam. So to create a barrier and something that'll dry relatively quickly, Mod Podge or like Elmer's glue, we're going to use a uh, Dixie Belle paint. These two foam boosters really have transformed into chic and modern decor. The first step is just to make sure this is really clean. To start with, I wanna use some gold leaf adhesive. I am just gonna let this sit for about 20 minutes. Now we're gonna get out the gold leaf sheets. Now you wanna use a tweezer and a dry paintbrush with this. As I'm going along, I'm gonna use the paintbrush and it's gonna pull away any of the excess. And then we're ready to move on to the next step. Now we're gonna add some paint, but we're gonna paint the inside of this vase. And it has the look of a white ceramic vase with a beautiful antiqued kind of rustic gold finish at the top. I sourced a couple things from the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna be using the Rust-Oleum Milk Paint. We are going to add our hot glue, put it into the corner. So we're gonna do this in all four corners. So once that kind of sets, we're gonna flip it over and do the other side. We are gonna be taking our smaller pieces and we're gonna be creating an X shape. And then I'm gonna come in with my hot glue gun. We are going to glue these together, painting it the same color as we did the other pieces. We are going to hot glue. All right, so we're gonna let this dry here for a moment. Um, and that's where this comes into place. Just need this piece. So we're gonna clip off this piece. We're gonna paint it. Right, so now that this is all glued and dried, I'm gonna take a little bit of hot glue and I'm gonna put it in the hole. Now that we've attached the tumbling tower pieces so I can go over the edges. And here's the finished product of my chic distressed farmhouse lantern. I really love how it came together. I took this fleecy fabric softener plastic container and then using an X-Acto knife, I just cut off the top portion. Next, I'm going to take some craft paper. I'm scrunching it up to create like a really rough texture. And then I'm gonna tape it on where I need tape to hold in place and just cut out my handle. And then wrapping that again in masking tape. When I'm done with this, I'm gonna create my paper mache and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rip the envelopes up into tiny little pieces then I'm going to add just a little bit of water before I turn on my blender so I lay out the Mod Podge and then I just grab a handful of the slurry and I just spread it around onto my plastic container I let it set for a full day and this is my finished vase here the next time you are at a thrift store pick up some inexpensive wicker baskets dip the paintbrush in the paint and then pounce. Take the brush and lightly brush the paint onto the basket in the main direction of the basket weave. This basket finish looks fantastic, styled with flowers or green plants. Take a wicker basket with a very light finish. Spray paint the basket in light layers with an oil rubbed bronze color. Let the basket dry completely. Paint in light layers. You will notice that the paint dries very fast between layers because there is actually very little paint used. I hope this inspired you to give inexpensive wicker baskets an updated look with paint.
So I'm starting by cutting two inch strips of fabric. I'm gonna fold a strip in half and just use an iron to create a seam so that they stay folded together. I'm gonna use some quick dry fabric glue to attach this trim right over the existing blue trim. Once that dries, I'm gonna flip this over and add glue to the backside as well. And I'm just gonna push those metal hooks through the holes in the beach mat. Project was inspired by Home Talk creator, So Bright Creations. So I am going to measure out eight inches and then I am going to cut out a strip. You can just kind of bend this, cut another strip of foam board the same length. And I'm going to cut four of these three inch pieces. And we're gonna put a little hot glue on the edge and attach it to the side here and push it in there to hold it square. So again, a little bit of hot glue on the edges. So this is going to help us just hold that batting in place while we get everything else on. Spray it on the edges a little bit here and bring it up. So we're just going to put a little hot glue along the edges, attaching the fabric to the foam board. These are actually um, picture hanging strips and we're just going to put it in place. And that's all there is to it. So we're going to start with this cellophane piece here. So I'm going to make the line here. I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Just put a clear dot or you could run a clear line. And next, I'm gonna go ahead and place the cellophane onto the glue and glass. So I'll go ahead and continue putting the glue and the cellophane up on all the windows. Here it is all finished and I could be more thrilled. Check out what I found at the dollar store that's going to completely upgrade my builder grade blinds. To get the burlap ready to use, I want to finish the edges. And I'm going to use my low temp glue gun and then fold the burlap over. I want to make a pocket for the curtain rod to go through. I'm going to fold over the top edge about two or two and a half inches. I'm going to do this to the entire length of the burlap until I get to the other end. I'm going to remove the end of the rod and then just slip the rod right through that gap that I created at the top of the burlap. I'm going to measure out two pieces of twine. Scrunch them up and tie the twine. How pretty are these faux burlap blinds? I'm going to start with a roll of window film. I'm going to cut a sheet of film just a little bit larger than the size of my glass. Now using a pencil I'm just going to sketch a design and I'm just going to slowly cut out each piece. So spray your window with water and then grab that first cut out piece and then gently place it onto the window using that squeegee each time and just pressing down really well just cut off these edges here. You wanna make sure to dry any excess water. I now have some privacy in this bathroom.
start with one produce bag and roll it in on itself. Continue to do the same with the three other produce bags. Secure the outer net to one of the metal clasps on the end of the netting. Now you have a DIY scrub daddy for tough dishes. Take one to two old washcloths, lay them flat, trace the border of the circles four times, cut out each shape individually, take a microfiber towel and do the same thing. Take two of the washcloth circles and put them right side in and secure right side in to each other. Leave an opening that is about three fingers wide. Flip the right side out and then add fabric cut for the interior into this dish pad. Hand sew the rest of the pad closed. There you have it, a cheap way to create your own DIY dish cleaning items using upcycled materials. What do you do when you need a tiny bag? Well, you take a little cloth napkin and iron, put that on top of your bigger Ziploc bag, and that's going to seal it at the bottom. Then you can put your little carrots inside, and then you're going to just grab some scissors and then trim off the end, and you have a perfect little snack bag. You don't need any clips. You're going to take it and fold it over, flip your bag over, and start rolling it down just a little bit at a time, flip it back over, and you're gonna see those little ends that were still left from your triangle, and you're gonna fold those over, and that seals it. You have a knife and it's dull and you don't have a sharpening stone. What do you do? You can grab a ceramic cup, flip it over, and you can sharpen it right there. And you have a totally, totally sharp knife. So you're gonna grab a little Tupperware, put the lid on. You're gonna shake it up and shake it up just enough that it's hitting the sides. Look, it totally slid off because it's been loosened by going back and forth against the sides of your Tupperware. You're gonna grab some ceram wrap and roll it out on your table. Table and then grab four skewers and then you're gonna grab two eggs and butt them up against each other and start rolling the eggs towards the skewers and the goal is to get the skewers to be evenly spaced all the way around and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab something to tie it off pull those tight so then you're gonna put this in the fridge for about 15 minutes and then you're gonna take off your little binding that you have around it and unroll the surround wrap. And we're gonna cut these into, what do you think? Little flowers, how cute is that? And they would be so cute on a charcuterie board or even to put in a lunch for your kids. On our countertop, grab a curtain rod and two heavy duty command hooks. Measure the placement for the two command hooks and hang the rod at your desired height. Arrange everyday items like cake cups, mugs, pictures, or plants using S-hooks on the rod. Let's start organizing inside your cabinets. Press this onto the cabinet door in this case and hold for 10 seconds. Now your oven mitts, holders, and silicone mats are ready to be stored. If you ever change your mind, you can easily remove the hanger simply by pushing up and taking it off. I chose to replace the first hanger with this metal hook. I replaced the oven mitts with a cooling rack and a pan guard that fit just as perfect in this spot. Are you always losing your measuring utensils? Simply place a clear command hook on the outside of an airtight container and you'll always have your measuring utensils right at hand. I use mine for baking supplies. Simply take a large command hook and press it all the way to the left of the cabinet door. Then take your paper towel and measure to size. Firmly press down on the command hook, securing it to the opposite side of the cabinet door. Take a piece of string and run it through the middle of the paper towel holder and simply hang it on your two new command hooks. It's as easy as that. Already have a place to store your paper towels? Simply take off the paper towel roll from your two command hooks and replace it with a plastic shopping bag. Here's a simple storage solution for all your recyclable bags. If you didn't already know, the little tabs on the side of your saran wrap or tin foil are meant to be pressed in to lock the roll in place. Using a command hook, simply stick the prong through the hole and press it firmly on your surface. I chose the side of my refrigerator. We're gonna start with a baking pan and we're gonna fill it with a bunch of marbles. I need to remove the back off the glue dots and then peel off the backing. And I'm gonna place it onto the bottom of the baking sheet. I'm gonna flip them back over. As you can see here, this swivels really nicely. I'm gonna take a cooling rack. I'm gonna bend up either side. Now I'm gonna tip those cooling racks up and I'm going to tie the top of the cooling racks together as well as the bottom. I'm gonna place the glue dots onto the baking sheet. Take those cooling racks and I'm gonna stick them onto the glue dots and I'm gonna press firmly to make sure they adhere well. And I hope this inspires you to make your own Dollar Tree Lazy Susan.
To get the table ready, I'm going to start by giving it a quick clean. Next I want to give it a light sanding. I want to wipe it again. I like to start with the pedestal first and then do the top. I'm going to add and combine some water with some white paint. To apply the wash, I'm going to use this chip brush because the bristles are natural and uneven. To soften up those lines a little bit, I can wipe them with just a damp paper towel. I absolutely love how pretty this table is now and how much the lighter color changes its look. Grab your hot glue gun. I'm going to start at one end of the mold and fill it slowly with the glue. The first mold is dry now, so I'm going to go ahead and peel it out. I can trim off any little strings and overflow. I'm going to give it two coats of a creamy white paint. Some all-purpose glue on the back of each one will be enough to adhere it to the furniture piece. I'm going to paint them using the same paint that I used on the stand. So I'm going to put a layer of clear soft wax all over everything. I'm going to use some dark wax and a small brush to push it into all of those little details. And do a little sanding around the edges just to add some faux age. It was so easy to add such pretty details with some hot glue and a couple of molds. I've drawn a line straight down the middle of the drawers and I'm going to use a red and a blue paint. When the first colour has dried, I then take the other colour and paint on top of it. Then take your spray bottle and spritz over the wet paint and then set a timer for three minutes. When the time is up, we have to start removing the water now and I use a toilet roll. Now I'm moving on to the top of the dresser and I've split the top in half. Now all my drawers are done and dry and I'm taking a stencil and some modeling paste and applying it to the stencil. I finished off the dresser by doing the stencil again on the top and here it is. 
I hope you enjoyed this and you're inspired to have a go at this crazy technique. I'm giving this little side table a makeover. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually give it a coat of black paint. Now I've taken some creamy white paint and I've added water to it. I've ripped up some newspaper and I'm going to apply some of this paint. Taking pieces of the scrunched up paper, I press it into the paint and wiggle it around. Keep repeating the process until you get to the end. Now the tabletop is dry, I'm going to use this stencil. I'm going to give it two coats of this gloss decorators varnish. Here's my finished tabletop. I think it looks quite effective. It's a very easy technique to do. Mm -hmm.